All right, calculate the molar solubility of lead to fluoride in a 0.2 molar lead to nitrate solution. Okay, so this is a common ion question. Why? Because we have lead fluoride. I'm assuming this is fairly low in solubility, so we'll be able to look up a KSP in our, in our chart, our textbook. And obviously we have another substance in solution here. And if I have lead and fluoride, over here I have lead and nitrate. So the common ion is going to be the lead. Okay? So uh, how do we want to do this? Well, what you want to do is you want to start off with this lead 2 fluoride. So that's PBF2. And it's going to be in phase equilibrium with Pb2 plus plus F minus. Okay? And we are going to, it's, it's a, a 1 to 1 to 2 ratio. Okay, and if you want to use your ice chart, you can, like the above example, use an ice chart. I'm not sure that we need to use an ice chart here for this one, um, but if, this, if X amount of this in solid form, right, is going to dissolve, it's going to produce 1X of this ion and 2X of this ion. So we know that, okay? Th that's, that's where we start. Over here, the lead nitrate, okay, this is... Is this fairly soluble? Like, is this going to completely dissolve or, or mostly dissolve? What does lead nitrate? Let's look at our, our uh, rules real quick. I'm, I'm noticing lead, and a lot of lead compounds are insoluble. But a lot of nitrate compounds are completely soluble. So what do the rules say about lead nitrate? What, what, what does the chart say or your rules say? Let's just go back here. I'll, I'll try and get this up on the screen. So you can look at this chart if you want. Uh, and we can try here. So lead, um, where, is, where is nitrate? Is nitrate up here? Oh, nitrate. Okay, down here, lead to nitrate. Right here, it's got an S there. Fairly soluble. Okay, what about, what about this? Um, all common acetates and nitrates are soluble. So all. Okay, nitrates. So we can, we can guess that this is going to fully dissociate. Why is that important? Well, because we know then exactly the concentration of lead ion. So I'm actually going to even show this, like just like a one arrow, a one-way arrow, because it's all going to dissolve. It's soluble. So if I have 0 0.2 molar of this, what I start with, then guess what? Because uh, lead is the one in question here, I have 0 0.2 molar lead because this is a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay? The nitrate doesn't matter. It doesn't matter you know, the molar of nitrate, it doesn't matter. It's, it's 0.4, okay? But it doesn't matter. It's 0.4, two times. It doesn't matter. So what I've got is I've got this common ion right here of 0.2 molar. But where is it? Okay. So <clears throat> I actually have, in solution, I have X plus 0 0.2 molar. And I have 2X here. So the uh, simplifying assumption strategy says this. Lead fluoride, did we confirm that this is a fairly low solubility? Lead fluoride, what's its KSP value? Can you see that? I'm seeing lead fluoride PBF2, <clears throat> excuse me, 3.3 times 10 to the negative 8. So KSP is 3.3 times 10 to the negative 8. So that's pretty low. That's, that's very low solubility. We're not going to get much X. Uh, not much of this is going to dissolve. Okay, it does not want to dissolve easily. So guess what? 0.2 is 2 times 10 to the negative 1. 2, 0.0 times 10 to the negative 1, let's say. That is much, much bigger than to the negative 8. It's much, much bigger even than the square root, which would be about, you know, uh, to the negative 4. So it's, it's hundreds of times, thousand times bigger, okay? So that means that we can virtually eliminate this right here, the x, from our KSP expression, okay? So instead of x, some little dinky unknown amount, we actually have 0.2. We have a massive amount here. That's going to decrease the solubility and make this X pretty insignificant, but we can calculate uh, sort of the molar solubility of this with this extra ion in there. So let's now go to the KSP, because remember, for this substance, the product of the ions in a saturated solution, or, or, or what, you know, the ions that we can determine uh, here from a saturated, totally saturated solution, they'll have to multiply to this. So the KSP is still going to be uh, PB times F minus squared. And so this is going to be 3.3 times 10 to the negative 8 equals, what's our lead? 0.2 molar. And what's our F uh, minus? Well, that's going to be 2X all squared. All right. 
Okay, so I'll just pause there for a second with this assumption. And again, we're, we're exploring this assumption that because the X value here is very much smaller than 0.2, I can eliminate it. it. Basically, I can just forget about it. The math is going to be much easier and it's not going to be much different at all. Okay. If we had this X plus in here, okay, and we were to multiply this, we're going to have a, a, some kind of cubic, okay, 4X cubed. We're going to have some kind of cubic uh, equation, which is tougher to solve for X, okay? Not impossible at all, especially those of you that, that, that uh, are taking pre-calculus 30 right now. Uh, you can solve this pretty easily. I've already taught you how to do that. But the math behind this is quite a bit more difficult than if we just had a quadratic. So let's go back here. We're going to take off this little x plus, and I'm going to do it this way. So this becomes, <clears throat> I'm going to divide by 0.2, okay? And this becomes, uh, well, let's see, 3.3 times 10 to the neg negative 8 divided by 0.2, 11. Okay, 1.65 times 10 to the negative 7 equals, this is going to be right here, 4x squared, I guess, 4x squared. So I'm going to divide this again by 4. Yes? No, because it's squared here. So this is, yeah, it's not just 4x, it's 2x times 2x. That's what this squared means. So that's 4x squared, okay? Okay, thanks for clarifying. That's important, though. Um, you need to know, know why that is. So let's go back here. Um, okay. Uh, delete, hello. So let's do our answer. Answer divided by four. Gonna work. Yep. 4.125 times 10 to the negative eight. 4.125 times 10 to the negative eight. Yeah, please keep all of your sig, uh, all of your decimals, as many as possible until the very end. Then you can do your, your sig figs or whatever. If you, if you chop it off here in the middle of the question, you're gonna be way off, which I think in your, in your ICE assignment, some of you did that. I, I don't know if you did, but some of your, uh, numbers were way off, but it looked like you did the process correctly. So don't round your numbers too early, <clears throat> only at the very end, okay? All right, so then we're going to take the square root of this number 2.03 times 10 to the negative 4. 0.03 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, if that's what we get for an x, okay, let's see, what am I actually looking for? The molar solubility of this compound. Well, the X is the lead concentration, but the X is also representative of the molar solubility. So it appears that um, that this should be our answer. All right, so here's, uh, here's with the ice chart, okay? Um, if you write the ice chart like they did in the textbook here, see how we just eliminated this X? Uh, we eliminated this x here, and then we get the solubility is this 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4. Uh, it's going to be in moles per liter. Oh, 2.0, what? 2.0. So, uh, significant figures. Looks like there's two significant figures that were given in the question. So 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4 uh, molar. Yep, 